Hello, good morning SH2 students. I hope today is a good day for you. Let's continue our topic about nuclear physics. This time we are going to discuss about the energy released in radioactive decay. We know that a radioactive elements will emit or may emit alpha and beta particle or gamma emissions. So for example, a uranium nucleus will emit an alpha particle or a helium nucleus with the result of daughter of thorium. As we can see here, this is the radioactive or nuclear reaction. The uranium nucleus is in high energy. It's relatively in unstable state. We know that. Okay, so to make it stable, to make this uranium stable, then it needs to emit an alpha particle. Then after it emits an alpha particle, it will result into a thorium nucleus, which is more stable than uranium nucleus. <clears throat> According to Einstein mass energy equations, yeah, uh, then there will be mass difference here uh, before and after the nuclear reaction. The difference in mass delta M is equivalent to the energy release as kinetic energy of the products. This is important. How to calculate it? Okay, for let's say the mass of uranium nucleus is 3.95 to 83 times 10 to the power of negative 25 kilogram. Okay, still in kilogram. Um, and then the total mass of thorium nucleus and alpha particle, if we calculate it, then it will be 3.95972.76 times 10 to the power of negative 25. Then we minus it to find the change in mass. We will get that negative 7 times 10 to the power of negative 30 kilogram. So, meaning to say here, yeah, the combined mass of thorium nucleus and the alpha particle is less than the mass of the uranium nucleus itself. The minus sign shows a decrease in mass. Hence, according to the equations of delta E equal to delta mc square, energy is released in the decay process. So we can calculate the energy released by times the mass here, the change in mass, with the speed of light square, we will get 6.3 times 10 to the power of negative 13 joule. So the energy release for one nucleus of uranium, when it is having nuclear reaction, is this one. <coughs> nah. So if we have one mole of uranium, one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 nuclei from the Avogadro constant, this one. Can you imagine how much energy released by one mole of uranium if one uranium nucleus can produce this energy? If we calculate If we calculate it, then it will be around 10 to the power of 11 joule. So it is so much energy in one mole of uranium. To do number 8, it is almost the same thing how to do this uranium nucleus reaction. A nucleus of beryllium decays into an isotope of boron by beta negative emissions remember beta negative is electrons the chemical symbol for boron is b write a nuclear decay equation for the nucleus of beryllium so this beryllium will become boron calculate the energy release in this decay and state its form so they give you the mass of beryllium they give you the mass of the boron isotope and they give you the mass of an electron <coughs> So, you calculate 
the change in mass first and then after that you calculate the energy release per nucleons and then after that you calculate the energy release for one mole of beryllium that is how to do number eight next it's about the binding energy and stability so by the time we're studying about radioactivity and also this nuclear physics we know that some nuclei of elements are more stable than other nucleus of elements so if a nucleus is formed from separate nucleus energy will release in order to pull this nucleus apart, energy must be put in. In other words, work must be done against the strong nuclear force which holds the nucleons together. We also have discussed about this that protons and protons actually will repel each other, but in the nucleons, in the nuclei of an element, they will stick together because there is strong nuclear force. So if we want to separate them into or dismantling it yeah, into uh, separate protons and separate neutrons, then we need to against the strong nuclear force that holds them together. So the minimum energy needed to pull nucleus apart into its separate nucleons, we call it as the binding energy of the nucleus. Every nucleus will have different binding energy so it depends on the elements you need to know that this is not the energy stored in the nucleus but it is the energy that we must put in into the nucleus so it it can be it can be dismantled in order to pull it apart <clears throat> In order to compare the stability of different nucleides, we need to consider the binding energy per nucleons of that element. We can determine the binding energy per nucleon for a nuclide as follows. These three steps. Determine the mass defect for the nucleus. How to count the mass defect? We have tried it here. Yeah. Yesterday, we need to know the mass of proton, the mass of neutrons, the mass of the nucleus before it is dismantled, and then the speed of light. Then we will get the energy, oh sorry, we will get the mass defect. This is the mass defect, the delta M. After we know the mass defect, then use Einstein's mass energy equation to determine the binding energy of the nucleus by multiplying the mass defect by C squared. And then the last is divide the binding energy of the nucleus by the number of nucleons to calculate the binding energy per nucleon. That is three steps. For example, this one. <coughs> Number four. Calculate the binding energy per nucleon of a ferrum nuclide. The mass of neutron, they give you the mass of proton also. And then they give you the mass of the ferrum nucleon before it is dismantled. So, first we need to find the number of neutrons, of course. And then we calculate the mass defect. Remember, this mass of neutron, mass of neutron times the number of neutron, mass of, mass of proton times the number of protons, and then after that, minus it with the mass of ferrum nucleus before it is dismantled then we will get the mass defect this one 8.680 times 10 to the power of negative 28 kilogram and then that mean the binding energy of the nucleus by times it with the speed of light then we will get 7.812 times 10 to the power of negative 11 joule Determine the binding energy per nucleon because there are 56, yeah, the total of protons and neutrons. Like last time that I asked you to do, 
you need to divide by 4 because it is a helium nucleus. So, because this one is a ferrum nucleus which has mass number of 56, then you need to divide by 56. So, the binding energy per nucleon, you will get 14 times 10 to the power of negative 13 joule. That is how to find binding energy per nucleon. So, the binding energy per nucleon of ferrum or iron yeah, is the highest one. So, we know that this ferrum from this graph is an element which is the most stable. Starting from here, if the binding energy is less, so it means that the elements is not stable. Going up, lithium, beryllium, boron, and helium, and the higher the number of the mass number of an element, it will go down. So this is the graph. Yeah, so after it's going up and then maximum in ferrum or iron, then the binding energy per nucleus for each element in periodic table will go down. So here you can see that uranium nucleus is not stable. If you examine the graph, you will see that general, the, the general trend is for light nuclei to have low binding energies per nucleon. However, helium has much higher binding energy than its place in the periodic table might suggest. The high binding energy means that it is very stable. Remember this, the high binding energy means that it is very stable. Other common stable nuclei include carbon-12 and oxygen-16, which can be thought of respectively as 3 and 4 of alpha particle bounds together. So, <clears throat> an, a helium nucleus is stable. A helium nucleus or alpha particle is stable. Then, a nuclei of carbon-12 and oxygen-16 also stable. Why? Because we consider this carbon-12 as 3 and 4 alpha particles bound together. So, still, it is stable. For nuclides with the nuclear number, or A, 20, or well, more than 20, approximately, there is not much variations in binding energy per nucleon. The greatest value of binding energy per nucleon is found for ferrum, as I've mentioned to you before. This isotope of iron requires the most energy per nucleon to dismantle it into separate nucleons. Hence, iron-56 is the most stable isotope in nature. So next, you need to answer question number 9 and number 10. Explain why hydrogen 1 does not appear on the graph shown in figure 31.4. Okay, so why start from hydrogen 2? Just theory. <clears throat> the mass of Beryllium nucleus is 1.33 times 10 to the power of negative 26 kilogram. A proton and a neutron have a mass of about 1.67 times 10 to the power of negative 27 kilogram. For the nucleus of beryllium, that I mean the mass defect in kilogram, the binding energy, and also the binding energy per nucleon. This is the way to find it. Just follow this one. Um, Remember that the mass of proton and the mass of neutron, you can use this value, of course. So, just follow this way, and then you will get the answer for number 10. Okay, thank you guys for listening to me. You need to do the 
exercise today, which is number eight, and then number nine and number ten. Thank you for your attention today. See you. Bye-bye.